Hello and welcome back to our series Journeying Through Lent and the focus on dirt and glory. This is day 13 and that is about almost 33% through Lent, which I don't think Lent very often gets described in percentages, but I'm starting that here today, <laughs> the percentage track. Um, my name is Gary, I'm part of the community here at Urban Abbey and like the start of every reflection together, we're going to pause and be still take a moment to be reminded of God's presence in and around us. So I invite you to join me in prayer and in this moment of silence. Yes, Jesus, in this stillness, in this moment of quiet, we thank you that your presence is with us. For all the noise of our lives, the busyness, the, the thoughts, the ideas, the, the joys, the sadness, the challenges, the successes, for everything, God, that goes through our minds and hearts through a day, Lord, we pause right now to be reminded that you are so close to us. You are in and around us and your peace and your love are here for us today. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Speak to us. Amen. Amen. So we're reflecting today on original sin, which is continuing the theme for the week. And the passage which is being referenced is Psalm 51. And there's a small excerpt to read to you here. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. So this idea of original sin is actually one which tries to take the idea of sin, which can seem like something that just happens or accidentally occurs in a day or in a situation, and actually really goes, hang on, there seems like there's a pattern of this. It seems like something about this, there's a disposition or a tendency towards. And it was Augustine, who was one of the really significant theologians for the Western Church, actually spoke about original sin and this idea even from birth there's this this tendency this leaning towards sin and we hear that as well obviously in that cry out in the psalm 51 passage so we have this concept this idea of original sin when you look at it through the genesis story you see that in genesis 1 god says it is good he looks over creation he looks over me and you over man and woman and says it is good and is made in his image But then you find in Genesis 3, this moment, this story of the fall, the temptation, this conversation with the devil, the serpent, um, who comes to tempt Adam and Eve. And the idea he uses is, you will be like God. So take from his fruit, you'll be like God. And so in this fall, it can be a bit confusing because it's like, well, we just heard in Genesis 1, we're good and made in the image of God. But in Genesis 3, it seems like that's the very temptation Um, to make us fall and the whole idea around that is that actually the temptation was to be like God but without God to be like him but without him and so instead you get all these mini gods these uh, already just describing you can hear of the chaos but this idea that we can live and have our life and energy without being connected to the source without being connected to the creator and so that separation comes in and That's what Augustine reflects on is this pattern, this tendency in human nature to tend towards that way. And so when we think about that concept, it can be quite a a sad one or a difficult one to deal with, especially on a Wednesday morning or Wednesday afternoon when you might be watching this and understanding, well, what does that mean for our lives? What does that mean for our everyday? Is this something we can escape? Is this something that we're trapped with? And that's where you get this beautiful story of reconciliation in Christ. And Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians 15, 22. And he talks about how all die in Adam, but all are made alive in Christ. And what he's referring to is, is that tendency, that pattern of behaviour that leads to, to this sin and the death and this destruction that so often sin leads to. And we don't have to look far in our lives to see the death and destruction that comes from that tendency and in the news today. It's so aplenty and around in the world. And so that path, he says, although that's a a tendency, a leaning that can happen in human nature, 
that Christ invites us to life, that by his sacrifice, his goodness, his grace, that, that we are free from that tendency, that we are freed um, from that sin and shame path and instead to a path of life and goodness. And so in the story, despite the wrestles and the struggles and the challenges we may encounter, that we can know our identity is found in Christ. And so with that thought in your mind, I encourage you in this next minute or two to reflect on Psalm 51, which is an incredible passage, an incredible poem, a prayer, a cry of the heart from David in anguish and in sorrow and in wrestling with his own failures and struggles. And in that we hear of a reconciliation of God, of his goodness, of his forgiveness, his love. And so with that passage, as you read through and bearing in mind that promise of all who died in Adam but are made alive in Christ, I invite you to take these next moments together. Maybe pause the video if you'd like a bit more time, but to find your Bible, to open up this passage and take a moment to reflect on these words together. going to share with you the prayer which uh, has been our prayer throughout this week. Lord, I know I am a sinner. I rejoice that you sent your only son to die for my sins, that I might be redeemed and saved by your love. Amen.